Hi viewers, welcome back. In today's video, let us discuss about the factors influencing the labor. Actually, uh, the labor begins and proceeds and ends with only these four factors. Okay, so these four factors are very very important for a successful labor process. Okay, so let us discuss about only these four factors today. Okay, so we have four P's. Okay, so with this four P's, the labor is uh, you are going to term the labor is going to be in uh, normal labor, abnormal labor, whether it was good, effective, all these things you can term it as. Okay, so now what are the four P's? So the first P is your pelvis, then the passenger, then comes the power and the psychic condition of the mother. Okay, so pelvis. So when we come to the pelvis, you are worried about the size and shape of the pelvis. Okay. What does this pelvis do? Actually, we have studied about four types of pelvis. Out of the four types, we have our gynecoid pelvis, which is a very suitable pelvis for the labor. Okay, You know, gynecoid pelvis is shaped in such a way that it can hold the baby and it is flexible to the labor process. Okay, So, when for delivery, it can flex and allow the baby to come out. Okay, So, that is the speciality with your gynecoid pelvis. You can think of mothers with a short stature. We are more worried about these type of mothers because like they, uh, we consider they may have a small pelvis or inadequate pelvis we say, where they are uh, not capable of holding an adequate um, sized baby and it may not help us during the labor process. Okay, So, on, uh, for that we are worried about short statured women. Okay, so, Normal gynecoid pelvis with adequate like uh, capability of holding the fetus, it is a good indicator that the woman can have a normal delivery. And the next P is the passenger. The passenger is the fetus okay the cute little baby who is going to travel all the way okay so what does this passenger doing why are we worried about this man okay so it is the size and the position of the fetus the size of the baby like already we have studied the baby if it is like around two 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 three and a half kg or otherwise like 3 kg to 4 also we consider nowadays like we are conducting delivery even for 4 kg baby we are having a normal delivery so so that doesn't become an issue okay so the weight of the baby the size of the baby matters okay in case if the baby is overweight okay big baby so in case the mother is having diabetes at that time the woman is having a big baby at that time the delivery of the baby is going to be a little risky case okay at that time you don't take risk you go in for a lses okay so planned lses can be done for those type of mothers but now now you are worried again about the position of the fetus what does this position of the fetus do position in the sense it involves the position of the baby with the position of the uterus okay so here we have five concepts like we have the lie presentation position like station all these areas we are worried so how the baby is having a position okay so position in the sense if the baby is having a vertex presentation or a cephalic presentation that is the head of the fetus is lying down in the lower uterine segment so what does this head do the head is going to apply pressure over the cervix so which is going to cause dilatation of the cervix which is going to help in the labor process in case if the baby is having a shoulder presentation or otherwise a breech presentation this amount of pressure cannot be given so you cannot expect for a normal delivery to take place so that for that reason vertex presentation is always recommended so, in case if the mother is having a vertex presentation, well and good, she can proceed into normal labor easily and the pressure of the fetus is going to help in the normal labor process, okay. But in case of the other areas, we are little worried, okay. Again, it is with the, your presentation. 
so in case if the baby is presenting with a cephalic presentation so this part of the fetus or the occiput of the fetus is in the presenting part okay then what happens so again they said it is the skull so hard part so you know so when the labor is going to take place what is going to happen so you have your suture line there will be overlapping of the suture line and what happens so because of that what is that process called it is called as molding so molding takes place the head becomes a little more beautiful so it passes the birth canal the labor becomes easy but in case of shoulder presentation all these things are different but so now imagine your uh, this part or the occipital part doesn't present instead if there is an extension so when there is an extension of the head so what happens actually there must be an adequate flexion so that is called as attitude the head has to be flexed nicely like this so that the occiput will be the presenting part in case if the occiput is not the presenting part this like you are uh, like this part of your um, head is also okay but in case if it is your uh, face or this hyper extension of the face all these areas you may not have an adequate compression over the cervix and the labor process will get delayed so that is the reason why this position of the fetus plays a major role so that is the way the passenger is helping in the normal labor process so we are worried about the passenger also and then we have the power what is the power power is the contraction okay so already in the pre previous classes we have discussed the uterine muscles or the myometrial muscles they are specially designed muscles by god that is like they are it it is not your contraction and relaxation already we have said it is contraction and retraction okay so it is holding the power of the contraction so what happens it is helping to push the baby out of the birth canal but now when when these contractions are not effective so what happens there will be a delayed in the labor process so delay in the sense of course the mother will go in for lot of complications as bleeding prolonged labor baby will go in for asphyxia lot of complications okay so this is a very very important thing of the power so usually what happens in the sense mothers are like uh, i said no the very painful uh, thing in the world okay so you have your labor pain but girls or the women when they are first time getting exposed to the area what they think like crying so they will come sister i'm having severe pain now only i will deliver so then no uh, you do a pv and you say the cervix is not even started opening okay you tell the mother see just now you are entering into labor it is going to be a long process okay it is it takes a lot of time you have to wait for hours together for your labor to begin so pray nicely let the contraction takes place little more frequent let the pain become little more severe so that you will deliver easily so psychologically prepare the mother that she has to have a long process or otherwise what happens in the sense many condition many conditions what happen the mother usually becomes very tired in the first phase of labor that is your first stage of labor where only dilatation takes place and the baby is not delivered in that phase only they will become tired so when they become tired in the first stage of labor what will happen they will not be having power to push the baby in the second stage of labor so naturally there will be prolongation of labor or the waist fetal bits will be remaining placental bits will be bits will be remaining so you will have lot of complication so that is the reason you have to explain the mother tell the mother the power is very very important tell the mother don't scream don't cry try to have breathing exercises try to do diversional uh, therapies try to concentrate try to meditate try to pray all these things you do so that you will have a diversion in your pain level and you will be exactly using your power at the time of the labor during the second stage you have to explain the mother very clearly where the power during contractions is very very important and then comes the psych catric condition the psych or the uh, the uh, psychological state of the mother actually psychological state in the sense i have said you prefer primary mother 
first time they are getting exposed to labor they don't know what will be the type of pain okay so psychologically prepare the mother tell the mother the pain will be severe but it has to be severe so that the baby is very safely delivered okay so prepare the mind of the mother tell explain the condition so that the mother will not scream the mother will not cry the mother will not do anything and she will cooperate with you tell the mother the baby will suffer when well, like when you are doing against whatever we are telling okay tell the mother not to waste her powers during the first stage of labor which is very very needed in the second stage of labor okay so tell psychologically prepare the mother so in case if the mother is a multi gravida mother your work becomes very easy because she knows she knows what is going to happen in the first stage of labor and as well as in the second stage of labor so it is more comfortable so you can tell the mother okay okay you know no what will happen so now you are not supposed to do any anything don't cry don't waste your energy so wait for your second stage of labor so that you can push your baby you, you your task becomes little more easy okay so these are all the four p's like where we have to concentrate for a successful labor okay so sometimes it is in our hands sometimes it, it is not in our hands it differs okay so according to the condition of the mother so but always remember these four p's are very very important that is your pelvis passenger power and the psychological condition of the mother which is going to uh, play a major role in the normal labor mechanism okay so with this we finish this class and next class we will deal with a new topic okay hope you understood in case of your doubts go and give your comments in the comment box thank you take care bye